Hi, everyone. It's Miss Cheryl. And Miss Diane. And Miss Nicole. Welcome to week three, Wild Rumpus Week. So this week's Take and Create is animal glue art. What you're going to get in your kits is you'll get your canvas. You'll get a set of six glitter paints, um, black paint and a paintbrush and your bottle of glue. You will have to supply your um, pattern. So that'll be whatever animal you want to do. The example I have is a horse. Miss Nicole chose a cat and Miss Diane chose a fox. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your canvas and then you're going to want to transfer your pattern to your canvas. So there's a real quick and easy way to do that. If you do not have um, like graphite paper or some sort of transfer paper, you will take on the back of your pattern and use your pencil, side of your pencil, and just scratch all over. And then you will flip it over. Miss Diane will make it real nice and dark. And then you'll flip it over and you'll set it gently because you don't want to smear it onto your canvas and you will start tracing your outline. And for this craft, you do not have to have a solid picture. You just want to do like details. So you don't have to copy every piece of fur, every um, whisker or anything that you want. You can, you can if it helps you but you'll want to, when you're ready to glue, you'll just glue the items that you want to show. Miss Nicole will start gluing, and you're going to need to allow glue time in between. So if you, like, have something else you want to do, but you're going to, she's just going to follow along her outline and go from there. And when you do it, you're not going to want to rub your tip along because you're going to want to leave it bubbled up so that you have a texture. So like when you come to an eye, you want to probably fill it in solid because it'll show up as a full eye. It's pretty cool. And the harder you squeeze, the more comes out. So if you want a thin line, you're gonna wanna go with less pressure So if you make a mistake with the glue, can you wipe some of it off and start a line over? Yeah, you probably can. You might want to like keep a Q-tip or something next to your project so that if you want, but you're just going to have to be careful that you don't hit um, your other areas. But yeah, that's why, you know, you just need to be limited on where you're covering. So and then a lot of times if you do make a mistake, if it's not too bad, you can just add a little bit more glue or spots to it. And no one will even notice but you that it's actually a mistake. <laughs> and we don't have to cover all the lines because nope. it's going to be covered with paint. So you're not yep. going to see anything. So you're not going to see any of the lines that you've previously traced on there. Because once we're done, we're going to go over this with all black paint. And then we're going to use all our metallic paints to give it more detail and um, depth. Like I did this husky. So if... You can see, but you don't want to tilt too far. I just filled in a little bit so that it'll look like the husky at the end. But yeah, you're just going to want to, yeah, not to do too much detail because a lot of times the glue will just bleed into each other. So, and you don't want your animal to look mean. You don't look, want to grumpy, I should say. So you want them to look happy and friendly. So I see my tongue kind of bled more into the mouth. So I'm going to make it a little bit longer. So it looks like his tongue's sticking out further. But once you put the other paint on, who knows what it's going to look like. It might just look like a blob. 
<laughs> but we know it's the tongue. <laughs> so now after you get all your glue on, you're going to just want to let it dry. It's going to have to set. And when it's completely dry, is when you'll be able to go over it with your paint. So now that our glue is all dry on our uh, pictures, um, it, raise, it didn't raise as much as I thought it would puff, I should say. So if you want a more puffed pitcher like the horse did, you might want to use a hot glue gun or maybe more of a craft glue because we just use the Elmer's glue. But we're going to start going over ours in black. So when you get yours, this will be the step where you'll go over in black. You're going to want to get your paintbrush just a little bit wet and then dab it off onto your paper towel. Always put a paper towel or something on you so that you don't get paint on your <laughs> tables or something like that because it, I mean, it cleans off, but why, why the extra mess? But yeah, if you just add a little bit of water to your paint, it'll flow better on your canvas. So you're just going to want to cover your whole canvas. get your brush strokes out just going from the bottom to the top and go in one direction and that'll give you a nice solid but since we're going to go over it with the metallic paint it won't make a difference you can use whatever colors we're going to give you one of each color in the kit so you use them all you use one i love miss diane's because you know foxes are that copper covered color to start with so it kind of just looks really neat i want to make sure you get the edges of your picture too So now we're all dry, all covered in black, and you can make out our outlines. Miss Diane's been working on hers. She had to fix up her eye a little bit. So it's like she just added some more glue and she just needs some drying time because she didn't like how her eye turned out there. So just because it's done doesn't mean it's set in stone. You can still go and add more details or anything that you want, even after you've already added paint. You're just going to need to allow for the drying time. So now we're going to take our metallic paints and you can choose whatever colors you want and however you want to do it, however you want to apply it. Um, what I always do, I always dab it on my brush and then I kind of like dab a little bit off because you don't want it, the first stroke is going to be really, really heavy. So it just depends upon where and how you want it. And you just want to go real lightly. So it's just going to be like a, just a, a swoosh. So you can go all the way over your whole pattern and see how it starts popping, it starts popping up. And it just, you can go whatever colors you want. And it's almost kind of like a dry brush technique. So you can go over all the black, go as dark as you want so that you get the effect you want. I'm going to go all over my board with the, I think it's kind of like a blue-gray. And so far, this is just the first dab that I used. I haven't added any more paint. The nice thing about painting is you can always paint over it. To correct any mistakes you make. I mean this effect right here looks like it's already pewter. Wow. Just looks like you did like a pewter type that painting really instead cool. of just the oh, yeah, that looks um, 
other colors. So, I mean, I could stop right here and I would be happy <laughs> with it. But I'm going to go through and add a few other colors just to give it a little bit more zazz. Maybe I'll do um, like the gray. Not gray, but this green color. And I just dab it off a little bit on my paper plate and then dab it a little bit on a paper towel. And then I think I'm just going to go like on the outside. Just give it a little bit of swoosh marks. definitely won't use all the paint that we give you so you'll be able to reuse it And you can go back and forth between different colors if you want to go back to your original color. Okay, oh, I think mm -hmm. I'm done. I think I'm done too. Other than my eye that's still drying. <laughs> Cute. Very pretty. And another thing you got to remember to do is always sign your work when you're done too. You should always sign it either on the back or in the front. So it's just depends upon whether you give it to somebody or you're keeping it for yourself. Sign and date it. I said that helps you remember, hey, I did this and win. <laughs> okay. Thanks for joining us with this Take and Create.